Mark Invest come out swinging with a blog post, Finding Signal in Noisy Automotive Data. Since late 2023, media headlines have seized on data showing that electric vehicle sales growth decelerated in 2022 and 2023, from 113% in 2021 to 59% and 28% on a year-over-year basis, respectively. Our research contextualizes this deceleration in growth and suggests the traditional automakers cutting back on EV investment are at risk of missing the transition altogether. I mean, let's be honest, they were already at risk before they slowed down. By the way, this is another great opportunity to remind people, you've heard the saying, right? Don't believe everything you read. Well, here's a better one. Don't believe anything you read or hear anywhere, especially in the fake news. Instead, assume everything is total bullshit and then try to confirm or deny to verify. Otherwise, you might fall into the trap of believing it's for your protection, not their quarterly profits, and say, uh, let's not go there, I don't want to get banned today. So, global vehicle sales growth in a chart. The internal combustion engine in purple and battery electric vehicles in black. 2018, 70% year-over-year growth in electric vehicle sales, 2% decline in ICE. The next year, the decline in ICE vehicles doubled to a 4% decline from 2. Electric vehicle sales up 18% year-over-year. 2019, internal combustion engine vehicle sales plummeting more than a tripling in the decline, 4% to 15% decline year over year. Electric vehicles, 33% year over year increase. 2021, so outrageous. Uh, rebound during the scandemic, the supply chain shutdowns, limited supply, prices through the roof, consumers really just desperate to get any vehicle they can. Slight rebound in ICE vehicles up 1%. Meanwhile, electric vehicles <laughs> towering over everything else here up 113%. The following year, 59% for electric vehicles, Internal combustion in vehicles declining again, and a slight rebound in 2023 with ICE vehicles up 9%, electric vehicles up 28%. The trend here is quite clear. Some people don't understand or just can't interpret data, but the trend here is extremely obvious. Consumers are moving away from internal combustion engine vehicles. Their sales are declining in a volatile manner, while electric vehicle sales are surging. But that's not the narrative you'd hear if you pay attention to the fake news at the moment. Seemingly more important than growth in measuring the health of the electric vehicle market Market share is sending signals that belie the media bullshit. Sorry, I mispronounced headlines. Oh, wait, no, I didn't. Exact same thing. Importantly, as shown below, which we'll get to in a sec, the sales of gas-powered vehicles peaked in 2017. This placed first by hybrids and plug-ins, then by fully electric vehicles. Between 2021 and 2023, electric vehicle sales roughly doubled. I'm just going to say that again. Between 2021 and 2023. Two years later, electric vehicle sales roughly doubled from around 4.8 million to around 10 million units sold in a single year, increasing their share of the global vehicle market from roughly 6% to 12%. Now, let's do some, some math here. Don't want to put too many people to sleep, but if we double 12 again, we've seen a doubling, right, in two years. If we double 12 again, we're at 24%, a quarter of the market. If we double it again, we're at half the entire automotive market. We double one more time. We're at the entire automotive market. We're only three more doublings away from electric vehicles being all vehicles sold annually. That's it. That is the power of exponential growth. As we can see here, the world hit peak gas-powered vehicle sales in 2017. In black, internal combustion engine vehicle. In grey, internal combustion engine vehicle. Also, in the light blue, also an internal combustion engine vehicle. I don't know why they didn't just group them all together. And in blue, electric. We can see a pretty clear trend here. Now, obviously, there's estimates from 24, 5, and 6. But we've got actual data prior to then. This was peak ice sales. But do you think legacy automotive manufacturers have realized this? You know, the ones who are slowing down and scaling back their electric vehicle transition plans? Media pundits and many investors fail to appreciate the nuances of adoption curves involved in the process of disruptive innovation. An extremely polite way of saying it, it's true. Many folks, by the way, who are managing money for others, publishing research, appearing in the finance media, posting on Exit Elon Bad, just most people in general don't get this stuff. I mean, unless you've actually studied and learned about disruption and adoption curves, human beings just don't intuitively understand this stuff. Till the advent of technology, there was no reason for our brains to be able to comprehend exponential growth. We don't get it. We can't get it. It's not intuitive. It's an intellectual exercise, not a gut feel exercise. Perhaps counterintuitively, growth rates typically decline as the market scales into a new technology, as shown below. Now, you wouldn't think that, right? But again... This is why you shouldn't rely on your intuition. We're looking at an adoption S-curve. The curve in purple and the dashed line is year-over-year year growth. Notice something interesting. On the way to 100% market share over, let's say, a 15-year window, which is represented here, from 0% in year one to 100% in 15 years, notice we've got 140% in 
in the first tier, then 138, then 135, which if you didn't see the rest of the day, do you think, shit, this is pretty close, pretty consistent. Holy fuck, that's going to go on forever. By year four, you're at 127%. And now you start to notice the percentage decreases in terms of year over year change while actual market share is surging from 0% to just over 0% to still just over 0% towards 10% beyond 20%. And suddenly you've got year over year growth of 86%, then 55%, then 30 14, 6, 3, 1, 0, 0. So when you hear the narrative, the extremely misleading narrative that EV sales growth is slowing, no shit Sherlock. If you're talking about percentage terms, duh, that's the only way this could possibly play out. People hear that. They see percentages saying, oh my God, there's less demand. Bro, once again, why you shouldn't believe everything or anything you read or hear. In other words, decelerating growth does not suggest that new products, including electric vehicles, are losing mass market appeal. Quite the contrary. At only 13% share of the global market, EVs seem to be entering, not ending, a traditional adoption curve as shown below. We're looking at global battery electric vehicle sales market share. Have you ever seen a more beautiful exponential curve? This is why it continues to just baffle me to the point of wanting to claw my eyeballs out when I hear people saying... <laughs> that hybrids are the future, that EV demand slowing down, consumers don't want these vehicles, the internal combustion is still going to be here in 2035. Bro, oh God, it couldn't be clearer. We've seen a 10X in call it four or five years and another 10X, okay? Two 10Xs in terms of electric vehicles sold roughly over a decade. A 100X increase in 10 years and no signs of slowing down despite what you're hearing in the fake news. Perhaps exacerbating the analytical challenge. The auto market is not a monolith. Different vehicle segments and price points come into play as time passes. Each time an electric vehicle launches into a new segment with a lower price point, another adoption curve begins. Ultimately, each segment curve aggregates to the total adoption chart shown above. Clearly, growth will flatline as electric vehicles approach 100% of the market. Thank you, Captain Obvious. The key question is, can the industry continue to produce increasingly affordable EVs profitably? taking market share from gas-powered vehicles? We believe that the answer is yes for those companies investing aggressively now, as we explain in another article to be published soon. Now, I'll always have to be delicate and, you know, they manage money and all this other shit, but I don't need to be delicate. I don't give a fuck. So, uh, hmm, let's think about this. What Ark's really saying is, which companies are fucked? And the answer to that question, the companies that are fucked are the companies that are currently sl slowing down their electric vehicle plans. I mean, is slowing down investing aggressively? No which rules out every single legacy automotive company, they're all toast. And unfortunately, many of the companies that had very aggressive investor presentations to lure in one far end of the bell curve have failed to execute on their aggressive plans, meaning they're probably fucked too, meaning the future of the global automotive market looks a lot like Tesla plus China. Just remember, folks, never bring feelings to a fact fight. The narrative you're hearing about a slowdown in electric vehicles is not representing reality. In fact, it is the polar opposite of what's going on. Want more content? Early access? A bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 has given me a massive, meaningful boost in energy, allowing me to do a lot more every day, including using my brain more and using my body more. I highly recommend you guys and girls check it out. It's an excellent way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's got 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, plus prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes and adaptogens to help you deal with stress. Plus, if you click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR, you can get yourself a one-year free supply of vitamin D3 and K2. But don't take my word for it. Here's what some of you guys and girls have to say. AG1 has changed my life. I was, as you described, treating myself like a circus. I ate like trash, rarely exercised, used alcohol as a stress crutch, cannabis also. AG1 is what gave me the kick in the ass, got me back to the gym, motivated me to do more for myself, family, my business, etc. Keep doing what you do. Now, I know there's some skeptics, the same kind of people who think Elon Musk is a fraud reading this going, what do you thought? There's no way that's possible, bro. It must be a placebo effect. Believe it or not, this is a recurring theme. If you give your body everything it needs to feel and perform its best, including having a lot more energy, you'll need ways to use that energy. For me personally, that includes more exercise, moving my body more, more social activity, and more cognitively demanding tasks, including producing a f ton of exclusive content over on Twitter and on Patreon, plus my daily YouTube uploads. The proof's in the pudding. On to another testimonial from a viewer of this channel. SMR, you asked me to provide feedback on AG1. Here it is. It has helped with mental acuity, stamina, and intestinal waste management. 
uh, can't read between the lines, certainly helps with regularity and digestion. That's what the digestive enzymes are for. It has also dramatically reduced my cravings for sugar. You guys need to stop eating sugar. It's fucking poison. I'm 50, 5'9", and overweight, aka a fat motherfucker. I think that's a technical term for overweight, isn't it? Is it fat motherfucker or obese? I can't remember. I average 100 hours a week in the West Texas oil fields as a safety supervisor. Jesus Christ, dude. No wonder you're struggling to keep your weight under control. 100 hours a week. Brutal. It has helped me lose weight. It is not an appetite suppressant. It can help fat people suppress cravings and motivation to be healthier is critical for changing your diet. Love you, brother. Again, this is a great point. It's something people really don't seem to grasp. If you have more energy, everything becomes easier. It's like turning on easy mode for life. A few years ago, before I was taking AG1, my health was trash. I was struggling to get through the day, had afternoon fatigue. The last thing I wanted to do was either use my brain or move my body. Didn't have the energy. Now, my biggest struggle every day is figuring out ways to use that energy. I'm exercising way more, doing a lot more with my friends and family. And of course, my work output has increased substantially. And you can fact check me. Check out the average length of my videos I was posting to YouTube three years ago. Need I say more? And one final testimonial. Love this one. Okay, here's the deal for me with this AG1 shit. I'm 41 years old and not the type to eat, drink, smoke or sleep healthy, so I was skeptical. That being said, here's what I experienced. Day one, meh. Day two, afternoon fatigue was about 45 minutes late. Day three, zero afternoon fatigue. Day four, zero afternoon fatigue plus extra energy. Day five, again, zero afternoon fatigue plus energy, wondering, what the fuck, really? See, this is the thing, right? The results for many people are just almost too good to be true. This, this is the same experience I had. My afternoon fatigue just vanished out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, what the fuck? Why am I not tired in the afternoons anymore? Surely, it's not that AG1, is it? Turns out it was. Day six and seven, same thing. Day eight, same thing. Plus, I had the want to get things done around the house that I normally would slack off and not get done. Again, the point, extra energy, you'll need to use it, you'll find ways to use it. Day 9, 10, and 11, and today is day 12. I fucking love it. So however you managed to get me to buy it, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much, SMR. It really changed me so far. Guys, this shit really works. Just try it. By the way, this is the reason I continue to relentlessly promote AG1. A lot of people get real fucking mad in the comments. Oh my god, Snake Oil Salmon sold out. Oh my god, he's a scammer. This is fraud, but... Constantly, I'm pretty sure everyone making these comments is also currently short Tesla stock. I'm not particularly concerned about people having a negative perception, those folks suffering from small brain syndrome, still living in my bum's basement syndrome, etc., writing mean comments, claiming AG1's a scam or it doesn't work. I mean, bro, when I get feedback like this, this is what keeps me going. Just try this stuff for a month, and if you don't get these results, get your money back. See, it's a literal no-brainer. It's an IQ test at this point in time. Testimonial after testimonial after testimonial like this. Get your money back if it doesn't work. Just try it for a month and if it doesn't work, get your money back. Today's the day. It's finally time. Be like this guy who was a massive skeptic, but finally, after a thousand promotions in a row, caved in, tried AG1 and has results like this. Head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or click the link at the pinned comment and please let me know how you're feeling in a few weeks time. Now, if you'll excuse me, time to put my extra energy to good use. I'll be recording some more exclusive content for Patreon and my Twitter subscribers. So click the link at the pinned comment. See you over on Twitter and or Patreon, and don't forget to grab your AG1. Love ya.